Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft video brought to you by Rob's Mind. Today guys, we are going to be building the Zombie Pigman Gold Farm from my Survival Let's Play series with the built-in storage system that uh, makes crafting really easy and all of that stuff. And yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to build that. It is going to be a little bit of a lengthy tutorial and I start losing my mind a little bit through it. So please forgive me if some of the video <laughs> footage is a little bit, uh, a little bit confusing. I did do my best. It's kind of a long tutorial. But uh, yeah, guys, this thing is pretty cool. And like I said, it has an automatic item distribution system that sorts it down into chests and you get tons upon tons of gold from this. I have not even let this run for five minutes and it has just gone up and gotten a stacks of gold nuggets already. And I mean, look at it. It goes through, sorts everything out, throws away our rotten flesh, because seriously, who wants to keep that junk? And yeah, overall, it is a pretty cool system. Uh, credits will be given to Navy Nexus, 77 Tigers, and only 21 for some of the technical bits that they came up with that I used in this farm. So look for, out for that in the video description. Also in the video description, check out to see the world download of both this world with the zombie pigment farm and also a blank sandstone flat world for whatever redstone testing needs that you might have. Enjoy. All right, so to start this build out, we are going to start with the storage. And lucky for you guys, I actually have a storage system built into this farm. So that is very convenient for quick crafting and all of that. So the, the size of the storage is up to you, but I would recommend making it five blocks wide. Out of double chests, of course, I did mine five by, by five. So that is what I will do it for this tutorial. But, you know, if you're limited by your number of hoppers, you can make it uh, a block or two shorter just to save another 10 or 20 hoppers it it really does make a big difference in the long run if you don't have a lot of iron all right now that we have one five by five wall of double chests that's 50 double chests right there we're going to install a second one f with a five block gap between them so one two three four and five we'll place on the sixth block right there to retain that five block gap and then one two three four five rows we'll make that five tall all right, now that we got both of those 5x5s five in, we've got our 50 double chests there, 25 on each side. We're going to go ahead and plug in 50 hoppers into the backs of these double chests, just like this. All right, there we go, 50 hoppers pointing into our chests. Now we're going to go ahead and build up a small frame around this, going one block in front, and uh, do keep in mind that you cannot put solid blocks over the top of chests or else they won't be able to be opened. So we are going to be using stair blocks to go on the tops of those. All right, so now that we have got all of these walls in place surrounding our chests, even over the top of them, and we are making sure that we're still able to open all of our chests, now it's time to go ahead and add in one more row of hoppers going right across and pointing into these stair blocks we just put in. After that, we're going to run honey blocks off of the tops of them and make sure you have it extending one more off of the edge on both sides. Then I just like to build off a quick frame to seal that up. And now we should have something looking like this. Believe it or not, these honey blocks are going to be the alignment system for our item filter. And these hoppers up top are going to be our filter hoppers. So we will be running ice blocks all the way across there. All the way across these hoppers, right up against them. But before we put in all of the hoppers, I think that it is time that we go ahead and add in a little bit of redstone. Alright, so to start out, we're going to be building a shape like this. I know, this looks like a really weird shape, but trust me guys, this is the shape for our item filter. Minus a couple of blocks, it's to make it easiest to build in survival. So we're going to go ahead and run all of these across, just like that. And now we're good to go ahead and grab our redstone supplies. We're going to grab some repeaters and throw them on these blocks right here. Coming down here, we're going to grab redstone torches and throw them on these blocks right here, running up to these top gold blocks. We'll take some more repeaters and throw them right here. 
facing into these blocks right there. After that, we're good to go ahead and place blocks behind all of these repeaters. Come up to the first gold block and add in our comparators. And then redstone on all of the other blocks. Then once we place in our packed ice right here, we are all good to go. And we can go ahead and hang that off one more because our cactus is actually going to be going right here. The way we're going to put that cactus in is just by we're going to build up a row of blocks right next to these hoppers. Place in a couple of temporary blocks right here. We're going to put sand on top of this block right there. Cactus right here and a slab on top of the cactus to prevent it from growing any further. We'll do that on both of the sides. Item filters, ice blocks, cactus and all. We'll get that all the way set up and then we will move on. And now that we have the item filters and the packed ice, the cactus installed into both of the sides, we are ready to go ahead and set up these item filters. Don't worry, we didn't do this too late because the honey block is amazing. You can click right through this weird little transparent part and we will set up our item filters with some items that are definitely not going to make their way into the system. You can use cactus or books or whatever you want. And then for the first two item filters, we are going to set it up with gold. Keep in mind, you only need to put one gold bar in there. If you already have tons of gold for whatever reason and you're building this farm, uh, you can go ahead and put 41 in each of these to max it out. But, you know, for the sake of this tutorial and everything like that, we're just going to use one block or uh, one, one item and then four cactus as our filler. So one item there, four cactus. Right, so the first two are going to be... Oh, jeez. Sorry, forgot I was in creative mode for a second. <laughs> oh, the first two of these are going to be used for gold ingots. And we've got two of those, not because we get so much gold, but because sometimes the hopper cooldown allows gold to slip past this one and make its way into the cactus, which we do not really want. So over here, we are going to, once we've got those first two set up with our gold, we are going to set the other three up with gold nuggets. All right, so now that the item filters are all filled in, we are going to go ahead and build in the water stream parts of this. So... We'll need three packed ice blocks like that, one coming off to the outside towards the cactus on each side over here. Next, we'll need to just go ahead and surround all of this with solid blocks. Alright, so now that we've got all of those surrounding blocks in on both sides, we are good to go ahead and add in our dropper circuit. The way that we are going to do that is by placing one of our circuit blocks hanging off of this edge. We're going to place a dropper right here facing towards our ice. Then we are going to have hoppers leading their way into the dropper. And these hoppers need to be on the inside of the farm. So they will be on this side here away from the cactus as far as possible. So you'll have two running directly into the dropper like that. And then one more running into either one of these hoppers. Doesn't matter which. After that, we are going to go ahead and set up the uh, automatic dropper circuit. The way we will do that is by having an observer facing like this. An observer with his face sticking out like that. Comparator on top of this observer. The comparator will be running to a gold block. Or any kind of block, doesn't matter. Redstone torch right there. Then we will go ahead and place in our sticky piston here with another observer right there. So that way, whenever the dropper gets any items in it, let's go ahead and throw in some sticky pistons. It will go ahead and get launched out. And then our water sources are going to go ahead and make sure that all of the items go through. So the way we'll do that is by having a button right here next to the dropper and another button right here. We'll place a water source right there, and a second one right here. And bam, any items we don't want get carried straight away into the cactus, and all the other ones should be getting sucked into our filter. 
Now we are about to test out to see if this gold is making its way into the item filters. To do that, we're going to place a second honey block right here, or another honey block right here, rather, so that whenever items fly over, they don't land on top. We'll fill all of these in with any block of your choice. And then we're good to go ahead and give this a quick test by throwing in these gold in here. And you can see that the gold goes in, flows into the hopper through the honey, and we are good. This stuff is making its way through. And once all of the stuff has gone out of the dropper, it goes ahead and turns itself off. So pretty cool and really useful. All right, now that we've got both of the auto dropper circuits installed and all of that is looking good, we are ready to go ahead and start with our next layer. So I start by starting with this honey block. I place out five shroom lights or any light source. It doesn't even have to be a light source. I just do it because it tends to look pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, I go ahead and do that, build around it just like this, like we have with the honey going on. And uh, this is all for a purpose, guys. So if you don't, if you don't want to use the shroom lights, at least use a different block. <laughs> and then we're going to build this up just like this. All right, we got this basic little L shape built up. Once we have that L shape built up, we're going to want to go ahead and stick a couple of trap doors right here, open them up, and that is so that if any items happen to come out of here spitting out this way, that the trap doors will actually prevent them from skipping over this uh, second gold item filter right here and winding its way into the cactus if it happens to be a gold ingot that does that. So... Pretty cool. We'll do the same thing for the other side over here. Alright, we got that all put on. We can go ahead and put glass over the top of this so that we can observe our items going through and into the, uh, into the item filter. I do like that feature. It's pretty, pretty nice. Purely for aesthetics, though. And then we are good to come over here by our dropper circuit and prepare it to add our hopper minecarts in. So we will need three for each system. We'll place a block on top of the dropper right there and then kind of build a little frame around these hoppers. All right, good stuff. Now that we've got our hopper minecarts and we have our rails... These rails, of course, are temporary. We're going to go ahead and place in uh, these three temporary blocks right here. Now, do keep in mind if these are items that you do intend on keeping, such as the rails that we're about to put in there and uh, uh, the like these temporary blocks here, uh, you might want to... Yeah, you might want to go down here and pull this comparator out so that you can reach inside of the dropper and go ahead and grab those blocks when you're done. Otherwise, they'll be dispensed out and our item filters are full, so sadly they will be delivered directly to the cactus. So we can go ahead and place our temporary rails on top of there, and then one at a time we'll just place, break, place, break place and break and you can hear it right here the rails are getting dispensed out and going straight into the cactus and we'll go ahead and add in the hopper minecarts for the other side as well just like that and then we are good to go ahead and place in a few solid blocks on top of this and this is going to be the platform for our trident killer and we will need uh blocks to stick out on these points right here and they do have to be these points so one here there right there and right here and it will be the exact same on the opposite side mirror image so here 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 and here all right good stuff and the redstone for the trident killer is going to look like this on those sticky outy blocks we're going to go ahead and put our four pistons in a ring just like that then over here, we will have an observer facing this way, not that way. Right here, we will have an observer facing out. That observer will be sending power into this gold block. We'll send, use a repeater to take the power away from it. Observer into a repeater. 
observer, so on and so forth. So the observer looks at the repeater and powers it in a loop. We will set that up on both sides. And now with both of the redstones for the trident killers installed, we should have something looking quite like this. And now I think it's only fair that we go ahead and actually connect the bottom half to the top half. The way that we're going to do that is with some stairs right here. So we'll have three layers of stairs going up. And that will run to a simple 3x3 three three platform with the middle block cut out for soul stand. We'll go ahead and complete the walls going all the way up here. Alright, so now we have got this built all the way up to our floor level. If you were unsure, right here with the glass is actually where our feet will be. That is the floor level. Uh, so we have got it built all the way up from the top of our stairs to there. Now we're going to go ahead and add in a water elevator by just simply adding in soul sand at the bottom and water sources going all the way up. And I'm choosing to use glass panes in order to retain the big mess from going everywhere because obviously every single one of these does have to be a source block. And once we've got the water elevator all filled in with our source blocks, we should have something looking like this to deliver us straight up onto the top. And I've usually got either a pair of wings or a pair of feather, feather falling, so in this system, I actually have not designed <laughs> a way to come down. So maybe you guys can think of some kind of clever, innovative way to install that yourself. So the first thing that we're going to do is build out a little strip going down to the end of our redstone right here, and then we are going to place glass blocks, whatever kind you really want, surrounding this thing. It doesn't even have to be glass. You can use dirt for all I care, but, you know, who doesn't like to see their zombie pigmen falling down and to their deaths? You know, that's always fun to see. So I go up uh, three blocks on this, filling in the corners, and then after that I abandon the corner method. So, we have this one three blocks up. Alright, so now that we have both these built up three blocks high, we can go ahead and add in our tridents into the system, like so. And now we're good to set up our little AFK room that we're going to have right here. So we'll build up a small archway for an iron door place our iron door in right here just gonna put a gold pressure plate could be any pressure plate obviously we'll go ahead and place a button on the outside so that we can get in here and then we will just go ahead and roof off the top like this then we'll add in redstone lamps so one there and then a block apart we will place a second one just like that And we will go ahead and throw a lever on each of these. The first one down here is going to be operating our trident killer. So let's go ahead and hook up the redstone for that. And the redstone for this is actually really easy. So we'll go ahead and just underneath this redstone lamp, we will place a line of blocks until it's even with our sticky piston. Then it will go down one block right here. We'll add repeaters aiming at those blocks. Then redstone dust on these three blocks both sides and a redstone torch right here and as you can see our system is locked the redstone lamp is off and if we go ahead and go inside flick the lever the trident killer turns on and nearly breaks my eardrums so now before we hook up the second lever we are going to go ahead and build up right here we're going to make uh, this drop, we're going to make it 20 blocks tall. So from right here, we're going to go up 20. We've already got three, so four. And just as a reference, guys, zombie pigmen will spawn on the south sides and the east side of a portal. So right here, you can observe them spawning out on the south side. They should spawn over here. And there they are. And then over here, they should spawn over on this side right here. And that would be towards the east. Come on. And there they are right there. All right, so now that we know that about the zombie pigmen spawning mechanics, and we know which direction that we're facing, obviously we're facing the east, so our zombie pigmen will be spawning out that way, which means that we will need to have 
our nether portals right on this side. So we're going to go out 10 blocks each way from this center block right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A 10 block long wall going up. And then we'll have the same going the other direction. Now that, that we know that that is centered, we can go ahead and place our 23 long block line right here, which is the bottom of our first portal. Then we got to build it up no more than 23 blocks tall, because a max portal is 23 by 23. All right, now that we've got our 23 by 23 portal in, we'll light that to make sure that it is the correct size and able to be lit and then we can go ahead and go two blocks away and build our other 23 by 23 size nether portal all right so now we're ready to start putting in our water catchment system we are down here by the tubes the first thing that we are going to do is come off of each side and go out to the end of our wall like that then we will place blocks up on the ends like that and create our wall on the opposite side all right so we have that little runway strip in for both sides what we are going to do next is place in four buttons right here on both of the tubes and then we will place in four signs just like this perfectly covering up the hole and that'll be for both sides, like that. Then we can go ahead and place water in here. I know I'm, I know it's very hard to see. I'm sorry about that. Probably should not have the uh, connected textures on, but what can I say? Got to roll with it now. So here we go. We will go ahead and fill in that to make that a small platform here. And now at the next side, we are actually going to make it be one block shorter. So... The way we're going to do that is just go ahead and place our row of blocks like this. It will go out eight blocks just like that. Then we will build a frame going around this. And we will need to build the same thing on the opposite side. So it should go to there. And that's eight. Then we can go ahead and place down those water buckets. They aren't going to cause any damage. And then we can go ahead and connect uh, this platform up right here. Now don't forget to fill this, uh, this space in. And then we are good to place down our single water source right there. And that should take care of everything else. So now with our water catchment system all completed, it is time to work on the redstone. So to work on this, we are going to go over to one side of our portals. We're going to count up one, two, three blocks from the bottom. We'll go ahead and place in these two blocks right here. Then we'll go up to the fourth block, and that is where we will place in our dispensers. So one here, and one more right here. Both of them do need to be pointed towards the portals. And we can go ahead and leave these two blocks here. Now to wire this up, we are going to go ahead and come all the way down here to our second redstone lamp. And we are going to build a redstone torch tower going all the way up. And now that we have ran into our glass right here, we're going to go ahead and place a block on the side of this redstone torch and run the signal out here. And then we can run that redstone wire right into a block and continue our torch tower on up. All right, so now that we have got our torches up, even with our dispenser and our redstone torches activated, that is what we want. If your redstone torch is not activated, you'll have to throw 
another torch right here in order to invert the signal or something along those lines. But so ours is in the right position, so we're going to go ahead and roll with it. We're going to go ahead and place a block right here, a sticky piston right there, a block down here with redstone dust on the top, redstone block right here, and then we will place in two repeaters right there. Now that we've heard that click, we're good to go ahead and place in our water buckets into our dispensers. And now essentially what is going to happen is whenever this becomes unlocked, we'll simulate it by removing this torch. Our dispensers are going to fire on and off extremely rapidly. That's exactly what we want. Now the next thing that we've got to do is continue this redstone torch tower all the way up to the top up here. All right, so now that we have our redstone torch tower built up to where we want it, it is one, two, three, four blocks shy from the top of the entire structure. What we are going to do next is going to go ahead and place a sticky piston facing up against that block with an observer facing out that way. Then catty corner that observer will have one facing like this, and we will actually be building up a small platform of... These of any kind of block running all the way down to this end and then running all the way back with the one block gap between and we will fill that gap with observers coming out this way. So you should have something that looks quite like this. So pretty much whenever we turn this on the piston will extend which will cause an observer clock to initiate. We'll go ahead and place in trap doors going all the way across here. And I do not know exactly who came up with this method of lava ticking. I, it was either uh, Navy Nexus, 77 Tigers, or only 21, I believe it is. So I will have all three of their channels linked down in the description. And we will go ahead and build up a small framework around here. You can make this solid blocks. I do like to put in a little bit of glass just so I can see the lava. I have it shining through. It's just for a visual effect kind of thing and then we can place lava in once we start placing in our lava you should notice that we actually have our portal lit so that is all good now we are going to mirror this little box on the opposite side all right so now with both sides in place we can go ahead and link up the rest of the redstone by just placing blocks on the side of this torch running all the way out uh to right here We'll go ahead and fill in redstone, so that's one, two, three, four blocks away. Then on the side of this block here, we will place a sticky piston with our second observer right there. So now, when we go down and turn this whole system on, we should see it in action. So we flip it on, the portals start igniting, and oh man, we get pigmen. Lots and lots of pigmen. So there we go. It takes a second for the observer clocks to kick in because of all of the uh, lag from the redstone torch tower, but there we go. Now we can go ahead and start killing these guys, and obviously using a looting three sword is optimal because then you get the most drops, the most bang for your buck, if you will. But if we go ahead and look down here, you can see that even without the looting three sword, we are still getting drops flowing in here and collecting into our item sorter very, very nicely. And I also forgot we'll be needing to add in half slabs right here and right here in order to collect the experience. So now that we've got that all in place, that should about do it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please be sure to hit that like button, leave me a comment, and please do subscribe to the channel if you're new. It sure does help me a lot. Thank you so much for watching another video brought to you by Rob's Mind, and I hope to see you in the next one.